So your mom had just graduated high school. Uh, her and your dad had uh, uh, broken up only for her to realize that she was pregnant. Explain the sacrifices that she made just in terms of opportunities given up to always be there for you. I didn't see it, but my mom was a star volleyball player. She could have went to MIT. She is extremely smart. Most people growing up in St. Louis, you know, you, you, you aspire to, to grow up and, and venture out, right? And, and she ended up having to make some tough decisions. And knowing that having a child would, um, you know, directly impact her life. I actually had wanted to graduate a year early. Everyone had all these high expectations um, for what I was gonna do and where I was gonna go. I mean, I was class president, top of my class academically. I was embarrassed. I felt like everyone was gonna feel like I was a failure and was gonna end up a statistic. And the fact that so many people thought I wasn't gonna make it and wasn't gonna be able to do those other things, that was just fuel to the fire. She was a kid when she had me. So she was a kid raising a kid. And going through those tough times, those struggles, you know, made us closer. You know, seeing my mom come back home, being exhausted and having to make sure I had something to eat, getting me ready for school. Um, and, you know, the water being cut off, the lights being cut off, almost being evicted. Um, just seeing how much of a toll that took on her, but knowing how hard that she worked to make ends meet and make sure that I had everything that I, I needed. You know, still graduating college, getting her master's, her doctor, her law degree. It's incredible to think that she did all of that, you know, while living, you know, check to check. And you would go to class with her often, right? I would go to class with my mom all the time. Undergrad was better. Okay. Law school was a little boring for me. I remember like grabbing McDonald's and a coloring book or something and, you know, having to be quiet for two hours, you know, so she could, you know, sit there and listen. He hated it. And the older oh, he got, he? he, oh God, he would come home and he would tell me all the time, I got to go to the league because I don't want to do this. I don't want to read these books. I don't want to go do, I don't want to do this like you. And I'd be like, well, you better figure it out. I knew from early age that I needed to make it out because I needed to take care of my family. I needed to take care of my mom and my grandma. So at 11 years old, I knew that I was gonna do everything in my power to make it to where I am because I didn't want my, my family to struggle anymore. Your mom remembers a story about you bringing in uh, your piggy bank to help yeah. with bills one day. <laughs> I did, and it was $11 or something and change. I wanted to help so bad because I knew more than anybody what we were going through because I saw it, I lived it every day. Um, and I think that, that motivated me as well. What did your mom do for heat or warm water, for baths or light in the evenings? In the times that we didn't have heat, she would, we would have to open the, the um, oven. The house was real small, but it would, it would help put a little heat in the house. And I didn't have a bed for a while, um, but it was so cold in the house that you know, we would sleep together um, with the blankets and stuff. What do you remember when the house was foreclosed? I remember getting groceries out the car and walking up. My mom went up first and I remember it, she dropped the she dropped the groceries, and I was like, "Mom, what's wrong?" And I walked up, and she just started bawling. And I seen that we you know we had 30 days to get out, and that was another one of those days growing up where it was just like, "Damn!" And you guys got through that. How? Man, rest in peace to her friend. Melanie was her friend that she went to law school with, but she stopped by the house one day, and um, she brought over a ten thousand dollar check. She was saying that, you know, God had spoke to her and said that, you know, she just felt like that we needed it. <laughs> oh, he told everything, didn't he? Um, she said at that time she had decided she didn't want to give it to the church. She wanted to, like, help people that she knew or whatever. She gave it to me. I was in disbelief. And that's, we got to keep our house. That was the one time that I thought I'm not going to be able to fix it this time. That was like one of the wildest days ever because my mom didn't tell her and she just brought over that check and you know we got kind of back on our feet um it bought us some time and you know we got to stay in the house how well do you remember uh your grandma holding the grocery bag for you at her house in U city i remember that vividly my grandma kind of like helped raise me if i wasn't with my mom i was with my grandma she would always sit in the in the uh, like a chair like this with a a Schnucks, Schnucks grocery bag. 
and I would always be like, Grandma, you know, can, can you hold the bag so I can shoot? Because we didn't have a basketball hoop or anything. And I would wait till my mom got off work, and that could be two, three hours. And I would literally sit there. And looking back on it, sometimes like I was throwing the ball all the way to the left and right, but she would always move it so I could make it. Um, and every time I made it, she would tell me how good I was and how proud of me she was. And if I wasn't in the NBA, she would support me, you know, in the same way. The love and support of, you know, your family can carry you to, you know, wherever you want to go. In the back of my mind, I always knew I had those two help and support and that I could do anything um, in the world that I wanted to.